Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for February 20th, 2024. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Love Your Pet Day, Cherry Pie Day, Clean Out Your Bookcase Day, oh no, Hootie Hoo Day, and Mezoram State Day. Let's go ahead and get started. First with a centering breath prayer. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lord, you are kind and forgiving full of love to all who call on you. Listen to my prayer, O Lord. Hear the cries of my pleading. Our reading for today is from Leviticus chapter 5, verses verse 14 to chapter 6, verse 7. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, When any of you commit a trespass and sin unintentionally against any of the holy things of the Lord, you shall bring as your guilt offering to the Lord a ram without blemish for the flock, convertible into silver by the sanctuary shekel. It is a guilt offering, and you shall make restitution for the holy thing in which you are were remiss, and shall add one-fifth to it, and give it to the priest. The priest shall make atonement on your behalf with the ram of the guilt offering, and you shall be forgiven. If any of you sin without knowing it, doing any of the things that by the Lord's commandments ought not to be done, you have incurred guilt and are subject to punishment. You shall bring to the priest a ram without blemish from the flock, or the equivalent, as a guilt offering, and the priest shall make atonement on your behalf for the error that you committed unintentionally, and you shall be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. You have incurred guilt before the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When any of you sin and commit a trespass against the Lord by deceiving a neighbor in a matter of a deposit, or a pledge, or by robbery, or if you have defrauded a neighbor, or have found something lost and lied about it, if you swear falsely regarding any of the various things that one may do and sin, when you have sinned and recognize your guilt, and would restore what you took by, ro- by robbery or by fraud, or the deposit that was committed to you, or the lost thing that you found, or anything else about which you have sworn falsely, you shall repay the principal amount and add one-fifth to it. You shall pay it to its owner when you recognize your guilt, and you shall bring to the priest as your guilt offering to the Lord a ram without blemish from the flock, or its equivalent for a guilt offering. The priest shall make atonement on your behalf before the Lord, and you shall be forgiven for any of the things that one may do and incur guilt thereby. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reading for today is about guilt that is incurred accidentally. Um, Now we've seen a little bit of this before. Um, The last set of of sacrifices was what do you do if, um, if the whole people, sort of the assembly, realizes that they have sinned? Um, How do you make up for that? Now it's on an individual basis. 
And ultimately, I think what, what I want to talk about today is this idea of repentance. In Greek, uh, you know, our English word repent or repentance comes from a Greek word which is literally to turn around, to change your facing, to um, change your mind and your heart. And that's ultimately what this is talking about, is if you find that you are have done something, first it starts with accidentally. Maybe you have no idea that you have committed some sort of trespass. Maybe you made something that should be clean, unclean. Uh, because you handled it incorrectly or you did it wrong or whatever it is. It ultimately doesn't matter the reason. Maybe you have done something and you find out later that that's not something that you should have done. Maybe it is something that you have done intentionally, right? You stole something from someone. You, um, uh defrauded a neighbor. Defraud is, is a pretty important thing. You may notice, uh, you may remember from Sunday's reading, the inclusion of defraud along all of the, so this man comes to Jesus, says, what do I do to it earn eternal life? Jesus says, you know, follow the commandments, right? And, and list several things that are on the, the 10 commandments that we're recognized, but one of them is to defraud to, you know, inaccurately take from your neighbor. This is a big deal in the Torah. It apparently is not a big deal in our world because defraud happens all the time, but you find out that you weren't supposed to do something or you did something that you knew you were not supposed to do and now you want to make a change. There is an offering that is associated with it. And it is the thing itself, you restore the thing itself plus one-fifth. There may be a ram in there as well, that's that sort of uh, calculations are not exactly clear to me personally, but what I do notice is that there's a restoration of whatever you, you make the thing right, and then you add on to it one-fifth. Five percent. Nope, twenty percent, that would be. Um, we're in a season of Lent. We're in a season where we reflect on the things that we have done. Maybe we find that it's something, or discern that it's something, that, you know what, I really don't need to be doing this. Maybe we look back and we realize, you know what, this is a thing that I knew that I wasn't just supposed to do, but I did it anyways. So Lent can be an opportunity um, to repent. It is traditionally one of the three things one does in the season of Lent. They are fasting, giving alms, and repentance. In the ancient church, uh, the season of Lent was used for those who were becoming a part of the church to sort of examine themselves, to discern what is it that they are called to be and to do as they enter into the church, especially in times when it was literally dangerous to become a part of the church. But it was also a time where those who had been um, how our word is excommunicated, though that has some more baggage than they would have had. Someone who has been sort of not allowed to be a part of the assembly because of something that they have done. It is a period in which they can, by self-repentance, uh, by repentance, by self-reflection, by sort of um, making things right, they can come back into the assembly. Another metaphor used for Lent that I love is it's a time of weeding. It's a time to get those things that have grown up in our gardens that we don't actually want there. And I 
it's a chance to take them out, to pluck them out, to grab them by the root even. Maybe to plant a new thing. It is our way of doing this exact same thing presented in Leviticus. To recognize your fault and to make some sort of restitution and make it hurt a little bit. Make it be something that you remember and so that you don't go do that thing anymore. So what is something in your life that needs to be weeded? What is something that maybe you have discerned that you need to repent from? Maybe it's something that you didn't realize was a problem, but it is. Maybe it's something that you know absolutely it is a problem and I do need to deal with it. How can this season of Lent be one in which you can self-reflect? to make restitution, to change your heart and mind with God's help, to turn around to repent. I invite you to take some time to reflect, to consider in meditation, in prayer, in journaling, and however it is that you process these things. What are you called to repent from. When you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of discernment and governance. Those who teach and those who learn. The community of faith in your church. Reconciliation in our relationships. all gifts of healing and forgiveness. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for the opportunity to change, to shift, to repent. Merciful God, strengthen us in our prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Europe. Safe, clean, and renewable energy. those who are lonely and forgotten. Those from whom we are estranged. All who glorify you in worship and service. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for the people of Gaza. For David, a friend of Beverly's, whose cancer has returned. For Daniel, a friend of Beverly's, who fell and injured himself. For Ernest, Lori's father, who is in the hospital waiting for an MRI to determine if the lesion on his spine is cancerous. 
For the friends and family of Jennifer, one of Brianna's cancer patients who died from breast cancer on Valentine's Day. For joy at the marriage of Kyle and Pepe. The wedding was on Friday the 9th, which was also Chinese New Year. These are Sandy's son and daughter-in-law. For Bill's friend Pam and several other residents who tested positive for COVID. For Andrew and Tony, who both are recovering from hand surgeries. And for the many situations on our hearts and minds. God of all joy, fill our souls to overflowing with the fullness of your grace. In this season, keep us mindful of your triumph over the tragedy of the cross and your victory for us over the powers of sin and death, so that we may reflect your glory as disciples of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And the God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org for more information. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. Our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition with my own little tweaks. Um, thank you for joining me. You can listen on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch on YouTube and you can sign up for a daily email on Substack. Thanks for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time.